All right, in this video, I'm gonna be looking at the Asgard 32 board from Airbot. I've got it hooked up to this MRM Reaper frame with the uh, just edge racing motors, and then I've got my battery leads soldered to the top. So this board is the upgrade to the Asgard. Um, so instead of running BL Heli S, uh, this is running the BL Heli 32 uh, 35 amp ESCs. This flight controller is running the STM32 F4 processor. Uh, it's got the MPU 6000 gyro, which I strongly prefer. Um, the MPU 6000 gyros what all of the top boards use. It's a very proven gyro and we know that it works. It runs the 30.5 by 30.5 uh, mounting hole pattern. It takes three to four S input. So if you're looking to board the five and six S hype train, this is not gonna be the board for you. The five volt pad here, it says it's a one amp back with a two amp max. Um, so I'd be, I'd be careful not to overload that five volt back. And one of the cool things about this that is kind of new on flight controllers is this uh, camera control pad which actually allows you to modify the camera's uh, onboard sensors uh, through the camera OSD using your Tyrannus controller. And it has six usable UARTs, and I'll show you uh, how those are accessible. If you notice these uh, four holes here, that is actually for um, kind of an expanded functionality. They were looking to add the ability to mount a second gyro uh, with their little soft mounting pads uh, right to the top of that. But as of now, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, it's not used. As you can see, the board layout makes for uh, an extremely clean build. I've got all my motors and battery wires hooked up and I still have uh, complete access to all of the pads that I'm gonna need to use uh, for hooking up all of my external components. On the top here, we have our power and ground pads and this very large uh, power pad. I'm not sure why they provided such a large power pad, but there it is for you. Um, and then on the front side of the board, you have all of your UARTs and your LED buzzer and all that stuff. With the exception of if you're using Spectrum, your 3.3 is going to be uh, provided right here. It's, there's four circles here in a row and it's going to be the third one uh, up. That's where you're going to solder your um, receiver. Uh, you don't see it too well because I've already soldered to it. And then on the bottom here you have all of your UARTs. Um, you have two, two or three pretty large pads. You've got this um, large 5 volt pad here a large uh, rectangle ground, and then you'll have your VBAT pad here. So if you need anything that, that's supplied battery voltage, you're gonna connect it here, anything five volt here. All of your grounds will run here, three volts up here. In the corner here on the left side of the board, we've got our LED and our buzzer pads. And then we've got camera control and smart audio, video in, video out, five volt, SBUS, SCL, SLA, TX6, RX6, TX5, RX5, TX3, RX3, and then TX1, RX1, and then that is that. All right, I've got my video stuff all wired up. I'm using the, uh, the Zoom Pod uh, from Shen Drones, and I've got the uh, Mach 2 VTX from Race Day Quads, and I've got it all hooked up with, uh, so I'm running my 24 volts straight to the VBAT on the board. I'm running my ground to the main ground, uh, I've got video here, which is also a black wire, which could be confusing. I've got the video running down to the video out. I've got the ground and the power here. I've got those running directly to the camera here. And then I've got the smart audio, audio wire running down to SA on the board. And then I've got also coming from the camera, I've got the OSD cable running down to uh, cam control down here. Because all of this runs up to this top pod, it looks kind of messy. I do wish that was a little bit cleaner, but that's just how it's gonna be for this build. Right, I've created this wiring diagram here to show you a couple different scenarios that you might run into uh, with your build. Um, and the first thing I wanna cover is UARTs. So as I said before, there are six usable UARTs on this board, uh, but you're not gonna see six uh, TXR uh, pairs. You know, you'll see one, three, five, six, you know, hey, where are the rest of them? Where are all the even numbers? Um, the reason you don't see all of those um, is because UART2, for instance, is labeled as SA on the board, which is right down here. And that's gonna be for your smart audio for those uh, VTXs that have smart audio capabilities. Um, UART4 is an internal UART. It's already connected inside of the board uh, to your ESC telemetry. Um, so you're not gonna really have access to that. Um, but you will have five and six here down below. So let me just talk through some of the different wiring scenarios. So for everybody, you're going to hook up your power uh, directly to the main uh, positive and negative pads here at the back side of the board. 
Now, if you're going to be running a spectrum receiver, which is takes 3.3 voltage, uh, unfortunately, you don't have one of these nice big pads to solder to. You've got this little guy. Um, it's labeled 3v3 right there on the board, so you're going to run your power right to that, and then you're going to run your ground. You can run your ground to the pad right next to it labeled ground, but I would, uh, because these pads are so small, I'd avoid soldering too much in this area, and I would just run your, your ground right to the main uh, ground pad here, or you can even wire it up here if it's easier for you. For the DSM or the signal cable, you're going to run that to RX1. Um, don't run it to SBUS. This has a built-in inverter, and it's going to screw it up, so just run it right to the RX1 pad. If you're going to be running a Tyrannus uh, receiver like the RSXR here, you're going to run your 5 volt to the main 5 volt pad, your ground to the main ground pad, your S bus to the pad labeled S bus, which has the inverter. If you want to use smart port telemetry, you're going to need to use the smart, smart port uh, uninverted pad on the top of the board here. So you're not going to be using the one off of the plug, that's, uh, that's an inverted signal and there are no other inverters on the board, hardware inverters anyway on the board, so you're going to need to use this uh, uninverted smart port. Check out my other videos if you don't know how to do that. And you're going to run that to an open TX. You can use TX5 or TX6. Both of those are available right here. If you're going to be running Crossfire, which is how I did it in my build, you're going to run 5 volts to the main 5 volt pad, ground to the main ground pad, channel 1 to RX1, and channel 2 to TX1. Um, and that's going to basically, you're going to run crossfire protocol uh, that'll basically do your controls and your te telemetry all over UR1 uh, which is really nice. So that covers your receivers and then we're going to move on to our VTX. Uh, in this case I'm using um, the Mach 2 from Rice Day Quads uh, but it wires up very similarly to the TVS Unify Pro where it takes uh, battery voltage. So we're going to run that straight to the VBAT pad. We're going to run ground to the common ground pad. Uh, video will go to video out. Audio will go to the SA Smart Audio Pad, which again is UART2 in Betaflight when you go to hook that up. And then uh, I ran my 5 volt and ground right to my camera. Now for the camera, you're going to run, you've already got your power and ground. You can run those off of your VTX like I did, or you could run those to VBAT if you wanted to get uh, battery voltage to your camera, or even the 5 volt uh, regulator here. And then you need to run your video to video in. And the reason you go video in here and video out here is so it can use the onboard OSD chip to do that OSD overlay on your video. And then one of the cool things that I mentioned before is that it's got camera control. So take your uh, signal wire, not the ground for the OSD cable, but the other wire, the white one. You're going to run that up here to cam, cam underscore C. And that's going to enable you to use camera control. All right, I think that covers most of the scenarios. If you have any questions on anything I didn't cover here and you want to see how something uh, should be wired up, just drop me a line in the comments and I'll try to help you out with that. All right, now for this board, uh, I was using some uh, beta firmware uh, that I'll post in the uh, description below. Um, but if you want the latest and greatest and you want to kind of know what's going on with the board, I recommend you hitting up the RC Groups page for um, this board. It's going to be found under Asgard 4x25BLLES slash Asgard32. It's up to like 81 pages now, but you know, as you can see, like on I think page 79, uh, Terra Lift here gives a link to the most latest version of the of the software that he's working on. Um, so the, I would check there for the latest firmware um, and then flash the board to that if it's not already. But uh, once you've got it flashed, I'll get into my setup. So I showed you how I have my board wired up. Um, now I'm going to go into the ports tab and I've got my serial RX on UART1. That should be how everybody has it. Whether you're on Crossfire or Tyrannus receiver or Spectrum, it's going to all be a UART1 serial RX. On UART2, I have my TBS Smart Audio Protocol hooked up. That's not currently working for me because I'm using the Mach 2 uh, board which has some issues and I'm going to need to wait until they patch Betaflight in order to make this work for me. But if you're using the TBS Unify Pro, uh, this shouldn't work out of the box for you. On UART 3, I've got nothing hooked up. UART 4 is where I mentioned we have our built-in ESC telemetry, so don't mess with that. Go ahead and leave that on ESC. And then 5 and 6 are wide open. In the configuration tab, I'm running DSHOT 1200 Quad X and I've reversed my props. Uh, only do this if you know what you're doing and you know how to reverse your motor direction. 
Um, I left the motor idle throttle alone. And then down here I'm going 8K, 8K with accelerometer on. Oh, I didn't realize they added this, maximum arm angle. This is that small angle that I always set. I guess you can set that right here to 180. I've got my craft name added, uh, which will show up on the OSD. I'm running the serial based receiver, crossfire protocol. And then down below, a soft serial was already on. I didn't change that, I left it alone. I turned on telemetry, which I'm using the crossfire telemetry. I'm not using an LED strip um, or any of this. And I always use air mode, OSD, uh, and anti gravity, and dynamic filtering on. And then the ESC sensor needs to be checked if you're going to get that reading from your uh, ESC telemetry. Under power and battery, if you have this set to ESC sensor and you have a battery plugged in and you arm the quad, you're going to see the amp draw per motor right here and that's something you can also show on your OSD. For PID tuning, I'm going to leave it on all stock PIDs right now and then I'll come back and play with it later. Uh, the stock Betaflight PIDs are really, really good and I usually don't have a problem running them out of the box. I'll put under filter settings. I'm going to drop this down to PT1 and I'm going to disable these first first two filters. As I've always said, you know, do this at your own risk. The, the more things you uncheck, uh, potentially the higher performance you're going to get out of your quad, but also the higher potential that you burn up your motors. So you should be um, unchecking these and test hovering and feeling your motors and making sure they are a temperature that you are comfortable with. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. On the receiver tab, pretty much everybody needs to select the Spectrum uh, TAER setting and I'm setting this to auxiliary 8 because that's what I'm using for my crossfire telemetry. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Under modes, I've added an arm switch, a beeper, and a flip over after crash mode. On the OSD, I've got my main battery voltage, my average voltage per cell, and my current draw, which is going to come from a uh, combination of the, the four motor uh, amp draws combined. And I've got my warnings here and my craft name here, and then I've got my flight time, or I should say arm time, here in the corner. Now, I did have to remap my motors because when I would uh, spin up, for instance, I would spin up motor one, I would get motor three spinning up, two would spin one. So how I remap that usually is I'll create a chart just like this. So I say when I spin up motor one, it spins up motor three. When I spin up two, it spins up one. When I spin up three, it spins up four. And then I go into beta flight and I type resource and it shows your motor resource mappings right here and basically what I do is I copy that and paste it here and then I paste it again and this is what I'm going to use as my uh, kind of instructions and this is what I'm going to use as to paste back in so if I'm trying to figure out which resource motor one should be mapped to I go up here and I say which one spun up motor one it was two so I'll copy two and I'll paste it to one and then I go motor two motor two was spun up by motor four so I find motor four and I paste it to motor two. For motor three, it spun up when I touched motor one. So I go CO8 is motor three, and then for motor four, it was spun up on motor three. So I find motor three, B01, and I paste it for, to B01. I copy all of this, I paste it back into the CLI, and I type save. What that does is it remaps all of those motors to the correct position. So now when I go into the motors tab, I can spin up motor one and see that motor one is what spins up uh, to two, three, three, four, four. I also had to remap my uh, the LED strip resource. So LED strip was mapped to AO2, which is the resource for UR2TX. Um, and I don't want that to be LED strip. I want it to be my uh, SA pad on the board so that I can control smart audio. So I looked under resources, type resource. And there was an LED strip on here labeled as A02, and I type resource LED strip one none, and that frees up the resource. And then resource serial TX2 to AO2. So if you basically type those two things in and hit save, you should see that now you have serial TX2, oops, sorry, here, mapped to AO2. So that's all I'm going to change for my beta flight configuration. Uh, I'm basically going to get out and fly and see how it feels. I, I likely will be coming back in here to mess with PID tuning. I might even come back in and turn off this uh, D-term notch filter if the motors aren't hot and I feel that I can get some extra performance by turning that filter off. Uh, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, but other than that, this is basically how I'm going to go fly it. And this is going to be how it's set up in the flight video that I post next.
All right, I had a GoPro on for this flight, but uh, I did two things uh, wrong. Uh, one, I had image stabilization on, which made the video just look terrible. And two, the angle on this GoPro mount is way too much for flying here in my yard. And uh, really, the video is just a lot of sky and not super relevant uh, to the flight. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna show you a little clip of it, and then I'm just gonna cut to the DVR footage. I apologize for not getting you HD, but I'm gonna get out uh, this week and try to get some more flights in because I absolutely love the way this thing flies. So here's the first look at the main flight of this. If this video helped you, please click the like button so I know that you're uh, you're enjoying the content that I'm producing. And uh, if you like videos like this, please uh, click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Man, I like the way this thing flies.